Thank you very much to, to both of you, uh, Will and, and Matt. I think you've given everybody uh, a lot to think about, and I imagine that there are some questions that are, people have in their heads, and so we have a little bit of time to ask questions now or comments, discussion, uh, anything of that sort. One here, yes? Let me uh, repeat the question. So you've suggested <coughs> that if you don't work for the charity, there'll be somebody else as effective or almost as effective who will. But um, isn't it possible that you might be the person who is the most effective? And if that's the case, then is that the path that you ought to take? Yeah, it's a great question. And uh, as I was um, I'm really keen to stress, this is some general arguments doesn't apply to specific cases. And so I took. A couple of days ago, I talked at Harvard Business School. These are people who are like really just, they've been incredibly successful, generally in the for-profit sector, and um, you know, they're obviously incredibly talented, have great experience, and are now thinking about working in non-profits or social enterprise. And for them, it really might be that um, because they're so well-skilled and um, well-experienced, they can actually can go and work at the very best organizations. And not only that, they can also, um, really make a big difference. So again, I said, against Malaria Foundation has a budget of $8 million. Um, imagine if you make that 10% more effective, that's 800,000 pounds every year, probably more than you can donate. So if you, can, if you do have the skills um, to work for both the very best charities and the skills such that actually you're able to make a really massive impact on those charities, then yeah, definitely you can, um, you can do a lot of good. Uh, one specific way you might be able to do that, um, even from now, is by working as a grant maker within the charity. So um, as someone who's deciding what causes they pursue. Where this is often just very badly done, but you can, you can be a geek, you can do your homework, you can find out which are the causes that are most effective. And that could mean that even working in the nonprofit sector, you could make a really substantial difference um, right from the beginning. In that last case you mentioned, are you thinking about a large charity that does a number of different things, some of which are highly effective and some are not? Yeah, that's exactly what I was right. thinking. So many of these mega charities will do a whole variety of programs. And um, in many cases, at least, uh, they don't really take an evidence-based, particularly evidence-based approach to choosing causes. And so you could really get to know the best evidence and make sure they don't fund the least effective things and spend more money funding the most effective things. Okay. Um, any other questions? Uh, yes. Um, so you mentioned that there are 800,000 positions in the United States. It's obviously like a very big number. So the question uh, refers to the fact that you said there are 800,000 positions in the United States and suggested that if you didn't become one, there would be somebody else to do more or less the same work that you had. But the questioner is saying, um, there's a shortage of positions in the United States, so in that sense, there is more to be done, and you wouldn't be replaced if you didn't become one. Okay, yeah, so again, a great question, and uh, it's that kind of at this stage that we probably want to uh, stop kind of battling with abstract arguments, as maybe I'm inclined to do as a philosopher, and just start to look at the data. So um, a, me a doctor in the UK, um, who's also a graduate from Cambridge, actually just did the analysis, so uh, looked at very many countries, looked at how many doctors they have, what their health outcomes are, and uh, did a regression, controlling for things like wealth and education and so on, um, in order to work out actually what's the difference that a marginal doctor has in the US. Um, and it's certainly not nothing. Um, the answer is it uh, gives about three quality adjusted life years every year. Uh, so that's um, really something, I mean, over the course of um, 30 or 40 year career, that might be equivalent intuitively to saving three lives or four lives, um, which is still awesome. Uh, but putting it in context of how much good your donations can do, um, that's about equivalent to donating you know, $150, $200 every year. Uh, and so in terms of the difference you can make between your donations and the direct work as a doctor, we actually can just look at the data and assess that um, directly. and. Do, certainly do no good, it's certainly not true that you do no good as a doctor, but your donations just swamp the kind of direct benefit you can do, you can have. 
Uh, anyone have a question for Matt, by the way, as the first couple have gone to, yeah, you do? Yes, yeah. Okay, so th this question is from an engineering student who is imagining that, that the way that he would be able to have the most impact is to go into engineering and do something there and refers to the example of uh, the invention of the transistor, was it, um, uh, as something that made a huge difference to the world rather more than you would in finance. So what do you think about that? Yeah, so I think definitely if you could do something like invent the transistor or something, then probably you should go ahead and do that. I think a lot of the people, <laughs> a lot of the people who have like done the most good in the world are people who like sort of were doing something, you know, something sort of random, and they came up with some awesome um, invention, like Norman Borlaug. Um, he he was the guy who did the he had the short stalks, right? Yeah. So he basically he made uh, crops like way more effective, and it saved like tons of people. And so if you could do something like that, then like yeah, definitely you should go do that. Um, I think, you know, you sort of have to think about, like, well, what's the average case? Like, am I really, does the average engineer really do that much more? And actually, I think it's a difficult question. Maybe the answer is yes, but um, my, my gut sort of says, well, probably not. Um, but I don't know. It's, it's difficult. Okay. Um, down here? How would you consider uh, where animal suffering fits, uh, given that you've been talking basically about global poverty? Uh, yeah, so um, maybe two aspects to that question. One is um, how, does, uh, how does animal suffering compare in terms of a cause area to uh, human suffering in the developing world? Um, second is how can you do the most good qua animal suffering? Um, I mean, on the first side, I'm very convinced by uh, Peter Singer's arguments that there's no um, qualitative difference between uh, non-human animal suffering and human suffering. I mean, we're, if you study evolution, we're just um, gradients on a kind of evolutionary spectrum. Uh, and I mean, in terms of the severity of suffering, caged at hens, um, uh, uh, factory farm pigs as well suffer absolutely immensely. Um, and it's something where, at least potentially, you could have um, an awful lot of leverage. So it's certainly a very plausible cause area. Um, in terms of how to uh, do the most good in terms of animal suffering, I think, again, Earning to Give is a very promising route, and a lot of people in the animal activism movement have chosen to do that. Um, another thing that's very plausible is uh, going into politics. So if you can go into politics, toe the party line, um, be just the model Democrat or model Republican on all issues apart from one, which is getting rid of caged hens or getting rid of um, factory farming or factory farmed pigs, then you could have this absolutely massive impact. Um, maybe your chance of uh, achieving that is quite low. Um, we've tried to work out within, for Oxford students, the chance of becoming MP or prime minister. Uh, for some, it can be as low as one in 100 for prime minister. It's kind of incredible. Um, uh, and, but even that's still low. But the difference you could make if you were successful is absolutely huge. And insofar as this is something where you could just have a one-off legislative change that would have continuing benefit, that would also be something that could potentially do a huge amount of good. Okay, it would be interesting to hear more about how you could have a chance of becoming prime minister as low as <laughs> one in a hundred. Perhaps this says something about the tendency of students at Balliol College in Oxford to become prime ministers, which I think there, there is a bit of a tradition, but it might be, might be harder here. I don't know that there's any particular institution that has that kind of stranglehold on the presidency.